106, and it's broadcasting now. Do me a favor, do like a little like, do -do 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 -do, like a, a news thing, and then I'll announce myself over it. Okay. So. Do -do 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 this is DS106 Nightly News with Tim Dew. Welcome to another edition of DS106 Nightly News. Tonight we have the special guest star, Andrew Allingham. Andrew, why are you here tonight? Do you have any idea? Because I make great content. Because <laughs> you make great content. You're a DS106 student, and you're one of our favorite and famous internauts. And uh, you're here because of a particular piece of content you made for DS106. Um, what was that? Can you tell us anything about that? Well, it's a 10-minute commentary piece on the 1965 Polish cinema masterpiece, the Saragossa Manuscript. And what it, how did you discover this film? I mean, I'm really interested in, you know, your discussion of this film. Um, oh, hey. Um, well, my friend gave it to me about five years ago for some reason. I think just because he wanted to buy it, but he felt guilty about buying it because it's out of print. But, yeah, so I've had it for five years. I actually don't know where that copy is. I gave it to a friend, and they never gave it back. So, so I had to Netflix it. So you had to Netflix it for this class? Yeah. And so you did that? I probably shouldn't say that. They'd probably get mad at me. Why? Because I ripped part of the video. I think Netflix is very understanding about that kind of oh, stuff. Okay. I really wouldn't worry about that at all. Um, <laughs> one of the things that's interesting about it is you talk about this whole idea of the frame story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you even went through a few of those frames to talk about it. And your introduction for that assignment is particularly good. So we're going to take a look at that right now. And then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Make sense? Yep. Okay, good. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to cut over to the Sargasso, Saragossa. How do I pronounce it? I do Saragossa. Saragossa manuscript, yeah. like Tony Saragossa, the defensive tackle. Saragossa. Saragossa. <laughs> really? You're getting technical on me. Okay. So here we go with a little uh, Saragossa, Saragossa manuscript uh, made by the ever great Andrew Allingham. Okay. And don't worry that, that's just Wirecast. And here we go, and let's start it. I'm going to full screen it. And as you can see through Wirecast, we're getting right onto the internet here. And let's listen to this. Now, I'm not sure, and this is something we're still working out with Wirecast, is whether or not you can actually hear the audio on <laughs> this. sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> and if it does, I'm talking over it anyway. Andy, they're supposed to hear, be audio. Can you hear any? No. Okay. So one of the problems, well, let me make sure I didn't mute it. No, it's not muted. No, it's not. You're right. Okay. One of the problems we have to figure out here at DS106 TV is how you actually get um, audio from another source in. So uh, that's something we'll be working on uh, shortly. But I do love, I mean, even if we just look at it together, I mean, this whole... Interest, uh, the introduction of the gypsies and them reading the story and then your narration kind of makes it you know of the kind of story within the story and if you haven't and then you remind the readers again and again if you haven't kept in mind it's a story within a story within a book within a movie that's talking about right I mean you really do a nice job of bringing people back again and again to what exactly they're seeing because it's nuts yeah it is nuts yeah it's it's Kind of a hard film to, I, I don't know, penetrate, understand. Yeah. So, I thought I think that's what the challenge I wanted to give myself is to try to understand the movie because I've tried to explain it to people, and you just can't really do it. No, and it's interesting. It reminded me. Have you ever seen Pier Paolo Pasolini's uh, Canterbury Tales? No. Because he I've goes. Read the book. Though. Yeah. Well, and, and the book is similar in some ways, right? I mean, the yeah, whole no, idea of story within yeah, a story. Yeah. And uh, he goes at it, not, I mean, it wasn't dissimilar from what uh, I saw of the Sargassum, Sargassum manuscript, which I haven't seen. But his is so dark, and it's so, like, brooding about the sex, and, like, the cook scene is insane. And, you know, it's just really, like, a dark look at the Canterbury Tales and how horrific everything else is. Whereas this seems completely light and fun. Uh, yeah, it's kind of... I don't know. That's where I kind of, I kind of think of it as a B movie because it is really 
quirky. It might just be because it's in Polish, and there's really goofy music going on all the time, like weird yeah. synth from the 60s. I don't yeah. know. You called it a psych, right? You said it was kind of like a... Yeah, well, yeah, there are... Um, there's a lot of weird stuff in it. And it's not necessarily like crazy colors, it's black and white. Yeah. Um, but it's, I would definitely put it in that category. Yeah. That might also be, because on the actual DVD, Jerry Garcia's name is really big print. Because I guess he was one of the ones that funded it. Because they found a copy of the film and almost got lost. And they. Um, so this is like an early Tarantino reproduces, Jerry re released this? Jerry Garcia? Um, it was Jerry Garcia and Francis Ford Coppola is the other name on the front. Well, so I, I'm not sure if they ever talked about it together. Well, it's interesting because <laughs> we talked about this, I think, in class. Francis Ford Coppola also released what was considered like the Wizard of Oz of the USSR. There's this crazy 1950s film, which I forget the name of, um, from the Soviet Union that he got his hands on and re-released that. And that is crazy in a very similar vein as this one you're talking about now. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, but that's great. Um, so what about your process in making this video essay? I thought it was really well done. How did you do the writing? I mean, your writing has been really consistently great in this class. And how did you go at the writing? How did you go at the production? I mean, you said you did it all in like an 11-hour Jack Kerouac, you know, <laughs> dream vision. What was yeah, it like? Um, let's see. I think it was difficult to actually find a way to get the scenes from the DVD. Sure. Um, I had to actually do like a screen capture video. Yeah. type thing, um, uh, which can't remember the name of the program. It's a freeware program. Um, you can't remember the name? Mm, yeah, I can't remember. Okay, we'll get it. But um, It's in your blog post. Yeah, it's in the blog post. I linked to it. Um, yeah, I kind of cheated a little bit with the... I was going to do commentary over it live, yeah. um, but I couldn't... I kept messing up. And I'm I'm much better recording audio, and then so I had to actually sync the audio up in the video. <laughs> so you did this, and what application did you use to edit the video um, and sync? Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> How was that for you? Um, I mean, it was good. The, the most frustrating part of Windows Movie Maker is that it crashes when you try to save stuff. Yeah. Which is, I don't know, the worst place you could crash. Um, so if you have a big video, it'll just freeze and you have to close it, force quit it. So you have to save a lot and often and get it used to saving. Yeah. Like now, you didn't <laughs> rip, you didn't actually rip the video um, at all. You no. just you just actually went in there yeah, and I played it in VLC player and and recorded it and from recorded there. It. So in, that like, worked for you. Bits, and then I had to cut the VLC part like me opening up VLC. See, that's what's crazy to me about video is that like some people who have a PC will be like VLC completely didn't work. When I did it, the sound was off or it just crashed. And other people with the PC are like, it worked beautifully for me. And same with the Mac with VLC, actually. But I think it also worked because it's in Polish and I don't know if it syncs up very well. <laughs> um, like the text syncs up well enough for them, I don't know, being mildly okay captions. I, can't, okay, it's, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if it's a good translation. No, totally. Now, <laughs> how is, uh, what's been your experience with DS106 overall? I mean, you've done a couple of great, we did the Google Recipes web story, you had that hard-boiled radio show, which I was a big fan of, you, Jordan Kroll, and, uh, and uh, Colleen, Colleen, Colleen Trachy. Is that, is that the right name? Trachy? Yeah, okay. You guys did an awesome, last name, I never know how to pronounce it. You guys did an awesome hard-boiled story. What do we have, how has it been so far, and what do we have in store from Andrew Allingham? Um, come, come the next three weeks. I mean, so far, it's, it's been fun. Uh, for some reason, I keep deciding to do everything in one day, which kind of, I don't know. Yeah. You it, got lucky it, with the video. If Teresa Kennedy ever complains about me skipping class, it's, I'll blame it all on you. Yeah, she um, would like that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, so it's been fun. It's gotten me thinking and making things, cause, which I hadn't done that in a while, other than writing papers. Yeah, but, well, um, the stuff you've made, and I said I'm a big fan, you got to go out. I mean, I think you got a lot of talent. you got to hole up and make some of this stuff. Yeah. There's some great stuff going on. That's what I'm going to try to get a dead end job. And yeah. I, I do think dead end job. I mean, look, DTLT was a dead end for job for me until DS106 came along. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, but like, you know, let's face it. I mean, get something where you can actually concentrate on creating stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, I guess what's in store is um, the fan fiction sections coming up. And I'm, 
I'm going, I'm toying with the idea, and I'm going to do um, an Olive Garden fan fiction. <laughs> so it'll be like Kelly, the recently pregnant, trying to make her husband propose at the dinner table, and then like uh, Kristen, the waitress, and then <laughs> the never ending pasta bowl, and then the garlic <laughs> breadsticks. <laughs> And the never-ending salad bowl. And this sounds good. Yeah. So and you the got some of wine that no one ever buys. <laughs> you, got a, you got a great line up there. Yeah. Now my wife would go crazy because she's Italian and she hates the oh, whole no, idea yeah, of the that's, Olive Garden. Oh yeah, that's the that's the funny part. I mean, part of me hates Olive Garden because it's not real like food. Yeah. But the other part of me is never-ending bowl of pasta <laughs> that you can eat. Yeah. In multiple hours. Well, um, also, I mean, they do. The commercials make me want to go there. Everyone's always having fun. It's all oh, about they the family. Go to Italy to train too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, what about the mashup? Oh, the mashup is going to be um, that old. I think it was from the '80s, but I saw it in the '90s. The "This Is Your Brain on Drugs." That's and right. And totally. Like it was totally stuff. from the '80s. I grew up. That was the Reagan. That was Nancy Reagan's kind of just say yeah. no I before guess the, that. The '90s was the meth one with that girl. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to do that one, but I'll do the uh, This Is Your Brain on Drugs, and then I'm going to mash it up with this, um, I've got an idea for a little video with the egg, and it, the egg becoming like sentient, like realizing itself, and then having to come to terms with life in such a short period of time, <laughs> and I don't know, life is pain. That's right. Before it realizes it's going to be cracked on the skillet yeah. and cooked like drain, like brains on drugs yeah. or drugs on brains. So hopefully that'll turn out well. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Andrew, thank you for agreeing to come on DS106 yeah. TV today. Um, you're our first special guest on DS106 well, I, TV, or at least on this nightly newscast with Tim Doom, because I'm not Jim Groom anymore. No, I'm Tim Doom. And you can see there's a big distinction you between. I gotta get a, gui a wig or something. <laughs> but next, I think for the next DS106 TV uh, nightly news update, we're gonna be talking about the mashup, and we're gonna be looking at uh, some of the things Brian Lamb talked about on Thursday, as well as some examples from previous courses uh, with the mashup, and then hopefully uh, looking at to what's ahead. And then I want to kind of bring back to the web stories and hopefully bring on another guest. So that's it for DS106. TV, can you do the, the theme song? Uh, uh, nightly do, News. Do, 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 that was do, Nightly do. News, DS106 <laughs> TV with Tim Doom and special guest Andrew Allingham talking about the Saragossa Manuscript. And his video essay, which was extraordinary. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. How, good, li good night and good luck. Oh, yeah, you gotta have it. I, mean, I don't have one yet, but I'll work on it. DS106 for life. For life, <laughs> exactly. I have it up here somewhere. For life. Okay, cool. Okay, we're going to stop broadcasting people. And that's it.